I really welcome you all to this session. Uh, we have a whole s uh, panel of amazing uh, social entrepreneurs who are using this concept of farmer-centered design to serve smallholder farmers around the world. Our uh, moderator is Shalu Umapathy, Managing Director of IDEO's Economic Prosperity Practice and herself an expert in human-centered design for social good. You can learn more about Shalu at school.org. And with that, I am going to hand it off. Have a great session. Thanks, Alyssa. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Energized after lunch. We're going to keep you awake. You're going to be so excited. We have the most amazing panel here. So it's, this, is the, this is the session to remember. Um, um, so I wanted to kick us off, kind of, so IDEO.org uh, is a human-centered design organization, so I wanted to kick off the session talking a little bit about what it means to do human-centered design, what we've done a little bit of, and what we've learned a little bit of at IDEO.org. Um, and then the structure of the session is that then each panelist will give a short presentation from the eyes of the farmer or the person that they're serving to kind of talk about what, it, what, what, service, what, their, what their service provides, what the changes in their lives. Um, and then we're all gonna kind of sit up front and answer a few questions. Um, I would love to make this an interactive session. So I think since it's being recorded, if you do have a question in the middle, like let's pause for a minute so that we can move the mic over to you. Um, and yeah, I think let's get started. So IDEO.org is a nonprofit organization. We've spun out of the for-profit company IDEO um, about seven years ago. And we use the process of human-centered design and all we work on challenges around poverty alleviation, both in the US as well as abroad. Um, and then let's go to the next, do I have a clicker? Oh, that would be key. Okay, so what, what is human-centered design? It's a creative approach to problem solving, one that starts with people and ends with solutions that are tailored to their needs. Um, we believe that great design well, when we start the design process, we kind of start with the user, what is desirable to them, what's exciting, what aligns with the vision of success for them in life. And then we also layer in what is viable from a business perspective and what is feasible from a technology lens. And at the intersection of those three circles is where true innovation um, that's transformative can come. And the human-centered design process is one that is not linear. Um, sometimes this is, the sketch of this is actually like a giant scribble. Um, but we start the process getting inspired and embedding ourselves with the communities that we're serving. We do design research, which is all about playing games and learning. Um, and then once we start to kind of see the patterns of what's possible, we start to converge around what are the opportunity areas. Um, once we've kind of identified a few different opportunity areas of what the solution might be, we then kind of go big again and, and brainstorm about what the possible kind of radical expressions of that solution might be. And then finally, once we've prototyped it and tested it and iterated on it, we kind of converge on, uh, on the idea or the theme or the system that we believe will have greater success and put it out into the world. One of the things that we've learned a lot about is that the difference between what people say and do and what they think and feel. Um, there's a, a farmer example of when I, when I did an interview with a farmer and I was asking, um, what's the most important thing to being a farmer? And he said, uh, oh, it's like t you have to teach me and then it's the practice of learning and then I can be a great farmer. And then I said, well, here's five dollars or the equivalent of it. Um, are you are you going to go take a class? And he said, no, I'm going to go buy seeds. What are you talking about? So it's how do you get to the deeper level of what's what's real for them? What's immediate for them? What's important to them right now? And how does that align with the longer term vision? Um, I talked about how we use unique approaches in doing design research. There's an example of a card sorting game where we talk to a farmer about what are the different ways of them connecting to market. So is it that they use an institution on the ground? Is it the dude with the truck? Is it, you know, what are the different ways? And then having them prioritize which is the most important to them, which is the most accessible to them, which one is their dream and why is it not possible? And by using kind of games and something tangible to respond to, we find that in our research process, we can get to much deeper level conversations around what is broken in the system around them and what actually is part of getting to a solution. Prototyping is another thing that is my favorite part of the human-centered design process. We take kind of all the nuances of what we heard when we did research and start to get tangible about what, about what the solution might be. 
So on the left-hand side is an example of how we started to, it's in the adolescent reproductive health space, where we were trying to explain the different contraceptive methods to teens, because there was like so many myths and misconceptions about what, what the reality was about each of the different methods. So we said, okay, what are some ways of bringing delight and fun, but real clarity around what each of those methods mean? The middle is a prototype with a partner in Nepal that provided maternal health services. And we learned that when it comes to caring for the newborn kids, it's actually the older siblings that take care of them. So how are we actually informing the older kids about the day-to-day -day health of their younger siblings? And so we just kind of built a, a learn by yourself um, tablet a set of screens, stuck it on a water tank in, in the community and just watched and saw what did people absorb? What did they learn by just interacting with this tab, this like kind of delightful thing in their community? And then once, based on what we learned, we could then refine and come up with an actual solution. And then on the left-hand side, or right-hand side, um, that's an example of a project where we worked on gender-based violence. And we were working with, um, oh my gosh, I've forgotten the name, in Kenya. Um, but they, they have an amazing set of programs on the ground. And so one of the things they did was, they said that there are many incidents of gender-based violence in their communities, but no one was reporting it because Anonymity was really important. Responsiveness from the community workers was also really risky. If they did not respond, then were they not providing services? So one of the prototypes we tested was kind of a, a drop your note in the box of if you, in, if you encountered gender-based violence issue in kind of a corner of the community where no one would actually be able to see if you were kind of walking in and out. Um, so these are just ways of when, when, you're, when you know a problem, you know some of the examples of the circumstance around them, how do we prototype what the solution might be? And kind of bringing us back to the context of farmers, there's a kind of a few lessons that I wanted to share. Um, and many of you know this, so it won't be shocking, but the income expense mismatch. So farmers oftentimes put everything that they've got into getting to a great harvest, which means investing in great seeds and fertilizer. But then there's a pretty long horizon until they actually get the payback, and they actually don't know what the payback is going to be at the end of the harvest season. So when you offer them a product or service in the middle of that timeline, or you suddenly, that farmer has school fees that they have to pay for their kid, they're making the decision between how much do I think I'm gonna make? Is my kid actually gonna be able to go to school? Like, do I have food for my family? It's a really, um, I think that they do some of the most complex mental math that any, of any population I've ever had to see. Um, so that's been, I mean, amazing to learn about. There's also this question of individual versus community that we kind of see an interesting tension between. So if I am going to participate in a program and earn a benefit, I, uh, it should be something that is offered to my community because it shouldn't be an individual, an individual should not get like, like identified and only invested in, it should be something, but I at the same time do not want to take the risk of my community on. There's like this kind of, um, trying to think of an example. So we were doing a market connection program for farmers in Kenya where I was talking to a farmer about, well, what if the price of yours, your product was the same for everyone in your community so that we could kind of simplify the, the grading kind of process to, to be able to connect to market. And the farmer was like, no, 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 because that lady that's two doors down, her crop is really bad and she would bring down the price of my crop. And then I said, but then so should she not be in the program? She said, no, 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 everyone should be part of the program, but then the benefit. So there's this like interesting tension of community benefit, but also kind of individual, especially when it comes to money. Um, when it comes to trying new things, seeing is believing. We, no matter what like the ag technology is, we do a test plot. We show it to farmers. We like demonstrate that the thing works before we ex expect them to take the risk on trying something new. Why should they? spend their, more, their precious resources on something that's unknown. So that's, yeah, those were just some of the, some of the high level learnings. Um, so let's switch gears into having folks present one by one. Um, if you guys have burning questions in between each of, the pre each of the presentations, we can take those as well. Is there any kind of upfront questions that folks have? Okay, let's, let's keep moving. <laughs> 